So our session on lung cancer, I will give place to Mr. Moisienko, but when we talk about our our achievements, we all know about the effectiveness of immunotherapy as the second line treatment, and uh, the history is quite rich. So first, uh, these inhibitors of control points were invented uh, 30 years ago, and now we are actively using this immunotherapy combined with chemotherapy and radiotherapy. In 2015, we had embromizumab uh, in expression more than 1%, and we had regimes with chemotherapy and immune therapy and supporting therapy after chemo and radiotherapy. So the events are developing very fast. First, you can see some period of calmness, but after the evidence-based therapy, it worked a very a long way and now it's a first line therapy and uh, there was combined regime and uh, so four year survival rate is fantastic data and of course uh, novelumab uh, with expression more than one percent when a uh, mediana increases by more than five times uh, we will we are quite aware of the data and I would like to talk about the perspectives uh, in the f nearest future to appear in our clinical practice and probably will completely choose the treatment of NSCLC so they are uh, adjuvant and neoadjuvant immunotherapy so we have about 40 percent of lung cancer and approach to therapy that will allow to radically treat the patient are quite important and the second direction is a combination immunotherapy with targeted therapy with and as Konstantin Konstantinovich pointed, it's of great importance, uh, anti-angiogenic medicines and uh, chemotherapy. And of course, studies that are aim to look for resistance in using immune therapy and ways to, overco to overcome them. At the present time, we have standards for uh, NSCLS of third, third grades, so two and more notes, adjuvant or non-adjuvant therapy, and of course surgical treatment, but at the same time the, effic the efficiency of chemotherapy is not very high. It adds about 5% to the five-year survival, but it's quite toxic, although it's bearable for the patients. And of course, Immunotherapy potentially seems a very interesting option because uh, it can, can increase the survival rate. And of course, the data that we uh, have published at the present time, they're quite optimistic. So first of all, it was star uh, study published in 19. Actually, we had uh, some data prior to that, but now we've got data about it. It's studying of the efficiency uh, in the preoperative period of neolumab and its combination with other medication, and uh, so the significance of pathometrological response to therapy. So frequency and uh, there were 53 patients. 39 were operated, and we uh, assessed the pathometrological response. It was complete pathometrological when all the cells were uh, eliminated, and total pathometrological response when 90% cells were eliminated and uh, 5 to 10% left. And pay attention to the frequency of total response, it, it was 9%. But the combination of 
to medicine dramatically increased increased the total uh, respond it was 39 percent plus six percent of partial uh, big pathological responded so summing up in 45 percent of uh, patients and it turned out that surgical treatment was quite safe after the uh, divent immunotherapy about 30% uh, of fistulas and only 2% one of them had fistulas developed and uh, had pneumonia but combination of nilmap didn't lead to medical toxicity in the patients and we had this Conclusion that immunotherapy in non-adjuvant regime is more effective. So the total response is 9% and 29% to the combination of the medicines. Very similar study is being carried out with atorolizumab. So these are LC, LC3, and the main goal is to assess big total pathological response and also the safety of treatment, efficiency, and the frequency of object response and presence of biomarkers. So quite the same strategy. And we assessed LKH for mutation patients and patients without this mutation were assessed separately. The data was very interesting. The frequency of total morphological response was uh, 7% uh, and 49% uh, had more than 50% reduction of pathomorphological response. In this study, we separately analyzed biomarkers, so usage of immunotherapy did not correlate with uh, expression and mutation load. So it's contradictory to the patients with NSCLSC now. So probably there is some biological uh, linkage between them. So we used to say that there was uh, this hypothesis that immune system cannot cope with uh, this immunotherapy. But the data we get now, the uh, less the mass is, the better the response is. So probably it's better to start earlier. And if we look at the efficiency of immunotherapy in monotherapy, so uh, in, in a combination and separately, you can see the difference. So more intensively, uh, the more intensively we affect the immune system, the better results we get. So when we have this combination, it gives good results. So it's been studied very well. So a combination of chemotherapy and nivolumab. 51% had immunotherapy, after that they had operation and they were assessed according to their pathomorphological response. It turned out that uh, the frequency of pathomorphological response is very high. Complete pathomorphological response was 71%. Pay attention to this difference in complete radiological and complete chronological and complete morphological, pathomorphological response. It's very, very different. So looking at this data, I want to think about the patients uh, who get this immunotherapy in disseminated uh, disease lesion. We don't know what is going on in the cancer. So probably if we had biopsy, probably what could get some result. And it could show that in some patients we could start stop immunotherapy and just monitor them. But the treatment turned out to be quite safe. And 
uh, very few side effects and very high pathomorphological response. It, it cannot be compared to uh, other medicine. We've got such patient. So we had complete radiological response and complete pathomorphological response. And I'm thinking about thoracal surgeons and if they will be necessary in the nearest future. I hope we don't have them in the, uh, our room, not to be killed by them. I'm sorry. Uh, so the, the conclusion is that immunotherapy in this non adjuvant regime compare, combined with chemotherapy have very good perspectives. So almost all large companies carry on different studies in different medicines and as far as I remember and I think that in the nearest future we will have complete data on pathomorphological and uh, radiological response and in the nearest future we will get new approaches to the patients with operable and C and SCLC and the other one it's predictors to immunotherapy because we need to know the patients who will have the best response to the immunotherapy. So it's quite easy to identify them. And now we have a whole study of it and indication of immunotherapy. And we can assess it using the serum of blood. Also, potentially, it's effective approach. The more mutation load is, the more pathological protein is being synthesized, and it's uh, the antigenic that can lead to immune response. And this study of Checkmate 2 to 7, they aimed to assess the effectiveness of immunotherapy in patients with different mutation load. So the choice of uh, immune load was based on the study of the previous uh, scientists so to pick up the level of mutation load that will be the border uh, between where the immunotherapy will work or will not work. So it's uh, 10 mutation per base and it was used in Checkmate 2 to 7. It was in Laboratory Foundation 1, and we received very interesting data. In this study, there is no correlation between PDL1 uh, expression and high mutation load. You can see both groups with high and low mutation load. PDL1 frequency was almost the same. So it's interesting to note that the same data was uh, proven by uh, large randomized studies and patients uh, with uh, SCLS and also data on mutation load was analyzed and patients with high mutation load they almost do not cross patients with high mutation load you can see about so so PDL1 high and low expression and all in all the cases the efficiency of immunotherapy was almost the same uh, in the combination durvalumab and tremilumab, despite the level of PDL1 expression. So it's absolutely an independent predictive factor, and the same data was proved in Checkmate 2 to 7. So you can see that the survival rate, even in a high mutation rate, was an independent factor, and it did not depend on. PDL1 expression more or less than 1%. I think that PDL1 expression can be studied and can be used to choose the treatment if both factors are negative because none of them, none of the patients 
with low uh, low mutation uh, load had good response. So probably you need to indicate immunotherapy to those patients, but with high expression, it's uh, uh, they sh we should indicate monoimmunotherapy, but in high mutation load. Uh, with uh, flat cell cancer and non-flat cell cancer, the combination led to high level of survival rate more than in monotherapy, and the same data were proved by the study. We can see the difference between the curves of survival rate. So we can see the difference between 48. 32 and 19 percent. So this high mutation load will uh, help us to pick up the patients to combine immune uh, medicine. And in the same group, there was a very high frequency of objective response. So objective response rate was two different combinations. It was an incredible option for those patients. And it's uh, probably they seem to be quite toxic, but uh, we had a new approach in that study, not every four weeks, but every six weeks. And that approach led to dramatic decrease of immune related reactions. So this approach looks quite effective on one hand and on the other hand, quite safe. And of course, it affected the level of life. So the quality of life with a high mutation load was higher than in chemotherapy. And of course, it's very important to overcome uh, luckily uh, Konstantinovich has mentioned everything he called me prior to our report and he popped, he picked up the topics uh, so the mechanism of resistance at the present time, they are being studied and they are very, very diverse. First of all, so the, it's connected to the cells which lose expression of HL, HL on the surface of the cell. They become invisible to the immune cells and no T lymphs are activated and no immune response appears. So it's the evolution of cancerous cells. That's why the therapy doesn't work. The, the second variant expression of clots of the regulatory immune cells uh, that negatively regulate T lymphocytes. Moreover, there are other variants of uh, A ADO1 expression is an enzyme that triggers immunosuppression, suppression of the arginine, arginine and uh, adenosine. It's a product of uh, APF degrading, APT degrading. And here, different approaches have been developed to block the receptor 73 to stop degradation of APT. The uh, adenosine is down regulated, and there may be the responses to therapy. It's one of the mechanisms uh, that can help to overcome the resistance in patients with the activating mutations. If we influence, if we if, um, act, uh, if we impact uh, the microenvironment of the tumor, uh, it shows uh, that endogenic medications can increase uh, the immune responses. What do they do? They uh, uh, they influence uh, the macrophages of uh, M1 and M2. Uh, they uh, they affect the M2 macrophage, macrophages, EFGF, 
and maybe uh, we can restore the response for therapy. And the second variant is to influence the microenvironment of the tumor using peroral inhibitors. Histone desetylase of the first class, it's a, a TINASTAT medication. But the first data has been published with combination with PEM, Pembrolizumab, uh, who progressed uh, in the first line of therapy in checkpoints inhibitors. It seems uh, that uh, the response rate uh, only 10% objective responses, but uh, the rate of control of the tumor 50% and quite a long duration of the response, 5.2 months with the use of this medication. The medication is conditionally safe. Uh, the trials uh, will be continued. Uh, the time is closing in. I'd like to make uh, conclusions. First of all, expression of PD1L1 and mutational load in dependent predictors of effectiveness uh, in case of immunotherapy. In case of high expression of PDL, why it may be monotherapy at medication of choice in a high mutational load, uh, PD1, anti PDL1 and anti EDGF uh, GF may have the advantages. High mutational load uh, may increase uh, the survival rate uh, with NIVA plus EP at 23 months, uh, comparing to 16 months on monotherapy. And understanding of the mechanisms of checkpoint inhibitors uh, will allow to achieve results, better results. And I support uh, the last. Uh, thesis of by uh, Konstantin Konstantinovich, uh, the win only uh, to uh, only those to win who do something, never gave in questions. Not, not into the mind of the question. It's very interesting question. I am not uh, sure that we should, or we can't see the tumor cells in this situation, in the stroma of the tumor, but there are immune cells uh, that may actively metabolize the glucose. In fact, it's very interesting studies when we start from immunotherapy and early evaluation of, of immunotherapy with the PET CT, and if we do biopsy at the same time to understand how PET correlates with the morphological data so that in the future to understand whether or not in some patients we stop immunotherapy uh, and not uh, do this endlessly. The question is not into the microscope in debut and preoperatively. I think it's very interesting. It would be very interesting trial. It can be done. Uh, as a part of the randomized clinical trials uh, really uh, devoted to adjuvant therapy. I think we should pull our efforts. Uh, de I, dear colleagues, uh, I, I have the question. According to your theory, the less the tumor cells, the better the effect. According to the theory, the adjuvant treatment should be preferable comparing to non-adjuvant. What's your opinion? Maybe it's a preliminary question, but all the same. I think neo-adjuvant therapy is preferable because we should have uh, uh, alert immunity for the immunity to work there should be the primer, there should be the tumor, and there should be the microenvironment, micro surrounding of the tumor. It should be present. 
in case if we have micrometastasis as a rule they don't have the micro environment and how immune cell how the immune cells work there whether or not we can see expansion of the immune cells we don't know I think that near adjuvant approach uh, is preferable but I think we will uh, know this soon because we Pembrolizumab. up. Oh, we are conducting trials uh, first, uh, and we, uh, and it's clear that uh, we can't compare different trials uh, in the full in two years. We will understand what's better. Early and and new adjuvant or adjuvant. Maybe in biological systems uh, everything works differently. Alexei, small question in routine practice: uh, Do you detect PDL in all cases? Not. We try to do this, but uh, sometimes we don't do this. Sometimes we don't have sufficient time. Uh, in the first line of therapy, if we don't administer, uh, prescribe uh, a PDL. Uh, Inhibitors, we do this as a second line when we understand whether to transfer to immunotherapy or not. We don't have uh, the time to wait for PDL1 data. Our morphologists, I can't uh, left the room, I can't throw the stone at them. We have to outsource this, and it takes up up to 10 days. Or we try to detect PDL, to test for PDL, sorry. Thank you.